I already have this pre-beveled and I have it exactly the, the right physical shape that I want it to be. I used the bell sander and made marks and everything. I explained it in another, in, in another video. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to etch it. So if you want to come this way, I'll show you. Um, I have the marks where I wanted to actually start etching on the wood. Just like a little guide mark. And once I get this in here, and once I have it uh, roughly in the right place, I'm going to use these uh, magnetic rods. They're little heavy bars, and it's going to keep it in place. And I'm going to put it around the outside edges, just enough to keep it in place, but not be in the way of the laser. Now right here, you hear that? It's still kind of moving around a little bit. I have an illustrator file here. Every single color that's on there represents a cut. And I can change the intensity of those cuts. I can zoom in here real quick. And basically the green is going to be etching. The red is going to be cutting all the way through the wood. And then over here, I have some solid black areas. That's where it's going to do some engraving. And that's where the brass fitting for the, for the ruler is going to be. Because the ruler is actually, it's an L square. So it's at a 90 degree angle. So that's where these two parts are going to meet up and that's where that metal piece is going to go. You go to the top, you go to print, you print it to this program. This program is the actual engraver program, right? So it's transferred all of the colors over, if you've noticed, and it uses RGB colors. So when you're setting up your Illustrator file, you want to make sure that you're using basic uh, RGB for your swatches. So each cut's going to be a different instruction for the laser cutter. So I'm going to zoom in here. And I'm going to move over to this area. Now, you notice that it put black outlines for these. I'm not going to cut these out using that. I'm going to use the raster engrave where it goes back and forth. So I'm going to go over here to passes and go to zero passes, meaning it's not going to hit that one. It's going to do the red one and the green one. Now, the red one and the green one, first, I actually want to do the etching. Because once the red is cut, there's a possibility that the wood's going to pop out of that frame. So the first one I'm going to do is the green one, and then the second one in the order here is going to be the red, okay? Now the power for the green one is going to be a lot lower. I'm just going to barely tap it. The power for the red one is going to be all the way at the top because I want to make sure it cuts through. And I'm going to get this one down just a little bit. Actually, I'm going to put it down to 80 speed. The slower it goes, obviously the hotter it's going to get. So yeah. you got to make sure that the material you're going to use isn't going to start, well, catching fire. So usually, like for plastics and everything, you can go a little faster. The other option is, of course, you can do multiple passes. But this is so thin, I'm not going to need to do that. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the raster engrave. Now the raster engrave here, you'll notice that it's showing all of these lines as well. I don't want that. What it uses is levels. It uses black and white levels to figure out where the tolerance is going to be. Remember how these ones are green and the outside edge is red and this one's black? Well, black is the heaviest color, so I'm, it's the darkest one. So I only have to put it up to about 50% threshold for the black and white, and then all of a sudden the rest of it disappears and I keep just the part that I'm actually wanting to engrave. The raster power for this wood. I'm going to set it to, I believe it was 40, worked out pretty well for me last night. Um, so 40% raster power is what I'm going to use for the engraving. And last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set this for raster and then vector. In other words, first it's going to do the engraving section and then it's going to go to the vector cut and do the rest of it, ignoring the black but doing the green and the red. So what I need to do first before I get ready to actually start cutting is I want to make sure it's connected up. It uses TCP IP to connect up from the computer to the actual printer here. It's essentially, it's what it is. It's a printer. It's a cutter printer. And you got to make sure that the, um, the laser is actually honed. In other words, the coordinates have to be matched up. If it's not honed, you have to go up to here to the home button and it's going to send very slowly, it's going to send that laser, it's going to send it to the, to, to the zero, zero position. And then you can move it wherever you want. So, I think I have the alignment set up properly, but I'm not entirely sure. So I'm going to pass this around the entire perimeter to see if it's in the general location. 
So that's the first thing that I'm going to do. I'm going to hit this blue button here that says Run Job Perimeter. And it's just about in the right location. It's a little tiny bit off. And I'm going to make Okay, I'm going to do it again. And I can tell where the red mark is. Alright. Now the last job that was being done on this printer, I think they were using thicker wood. So I need to make sure that the height level is also focused. Because the way that the laser cuts, it's like, think of the Death Star. It basically has multiple lasers and it converges into one point. You want that point to be slightly down into the wood so that we can get the best focus. You don't want it too high, you don't want it too low. You want it to be just below the surface of where you're actually going to be cutting. So, someone went ahead and cut this out of plexiglass. This is the exact height that it needs to be. I'm going to go ahead and put that right there. You can see that this is about maybe half an inch too, too, uh, too short for it. So, I'm going to bring up the level of the bed. Oh, okay, so I hit it. So now I'm going to do some fine adjustment. Yeah, right about there. But remember, this piece of wood is slightly beveled. Uh, see, see, notice that the, the orange adjuster is kind of wiggling around. That means it's way too high. So that wouldn't be blurred. Okay, so I think it's at the right level now. I'm going to take this out. Okay, it should be fine. Now the reason why the position is really important for this is because of the bevel. I need the part that doesn't have a bevel to be right in the proper location, otherwise it's not going to come out right uh, when I put it together. There's a couple of safety features that this has that prevents you from killing yourself. Okay, You have to have the circuit turned on to have the fan cooling and exhausting all of the toxic fumes outside of the building. That's the first thing. So the circuit has to be on. Otherwise, it's not going to start cutting. The second one that this has is this has to be closed. Otherwise, it still doesn't cut. What you want to do is if you do need to adjust it, if there's something really going wrong and you need to do a little adjustment or something, you hit the pause button. So that's pretty much how it's going to use. Um, close it down. The circuit's back here. You just basically you turn on the, the circuit breaker. Okay. I hit the play button and it's going to set off to work. It's calculating all of the, uh, it's calculating the raster, and it's calculating the trajectories of all of the vectors. Okay, so first it's going to do the raster. This is where it's actually cutting back and forth, just like if they were pixels. Okay, so it just got done with the engraving section. It got done with the raster engraving, now it's doing the vector. Instead of having two separate pieces for the ruler right away, I decided to go ahead and go all the way around the ruler to keep it as one piece so I can pull the whole thing out and flip it. Once I set it down into the frame, it will etch the other side and then it's going to cut those two pieces to make them separate pieces once it's done. Do you know exactly what your family would do if an attack came? Say at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. <laughs> Plastic bombs and glue Doing everything I can do To build the robots Build the robots
everything came out nice and you can see here this is why it was important uh, this is why the bevel was important see how the, the engraved section is on the area that's not beveled flip it around vertically so now this is the opposite side i've already gotten it prepared to where you can't see any gap in there at all. I want that brass piece to look like it was major to fit in there. 